Thank you, Huawei, for the introduction. Good afternoon, the audience. We are going to talk about uh, housing and management options for gas station south. So now we move from cattle, poultry, and now talking about pigs. Actually, there are only two uh, major housing options for gas station south. First one is individual stalls. Gas station stalls have been used in the U.S. for more than 30 years, and they are still the major housing system. It's about 75% of this installed housing stall. A typical gestation stall is two feet wide and seven feet long. Full housing basically means house pigs, stalls, in pens. However, group housing can be very different depending on what kind of feeding season. Also, the group size can vary from as few as four to six south in the pen to uh, four to five hundred thousand. This system stalls can help producers to uh, provide individual feeding tape and prevent cells from fighting among themselves to mix and also providing individual care to cells as needed. However, stalls limit animal ability and social so which can cause animal welfare concerns. That is why the season stalls are banned in some countries, even some states in the U.S. Oh, it just mentioned that California persisted has banned cages for uh, laying hens. Actually, in California persisted too, they also banned the gestation stalls. So in contrast to uh, gestation stalls, Group housing allow freedom of movement and social interaction, but facing the challenges of controlling individual situations. Also, group housing systems take more floor spaces, which reduce cell inventory in the same barn compared with just walls. So to deal with these challenges in group housing systems, different feeding systems have been developed. These feeding systems can be uh, classified into competitive and non-competitive. The competitive system basically means that cells can get more feed by fighting. The non-competitive system means that cells will get what they are offered without competition. One of the uh, competitive systems is small feeding systems. In this system, feed is simply dropped on the solid portion of the floor, usually without any protection of the cells. So fighting occurs during partial feeding stalls is another competitive feeding system. They provide some but not sufficient protection to the cells during feeding. Trickle feeding also is a competitive feeding system. Compared to a feeding stalls, a partial feeding stalls, and a small feeding system, that they drop feed at one time. Trickle feeding system drops feed at a speed that matches the eating speed of cells. However, cells do not eat at the same speed, which can cause problems in it. So in general, competitive feeding systems all can use the floor space efficiently. So the feeding system does not take much space or does not take floor space at all, which is floor feeding system. However, these systems cannot control individual feeding, also aggression during feeding, which can result in too fat or too thick cells, as well as injuries caused by fighting. So to deal with these challenges or problems, producers may consider to source cells by parity and body size. Because big, big and old cells really are more competitive and they eat faster than younger and the smaller cells. Through cells, through shopping by parity and body size, we can put cells with similar competitive ability in the same pen 
that way cells in the pan are uh, will eat similar amount of feed in the feed. In addition, if we store cells by their body condition, we have opportunity to add more feed in the pans without a per body condition. This picture shows you a commercial farm which had um, 5,000 gestation cells on one site, all in gestation cells. And the producers wanted to know what it will look like if they had to uh, go have their cells. So we collaborated with them and the rich of these cells into and the existing uh, feeder line. And you see the lines, they are exactly you know, men there drop the feed on the floor. So basically this is a floor feeding system. They keep the same style inventory, so each style in the pen has one pile of feed dropped on the floor. We designed two types of pens. The large pen at 26. At 26 cells in the pan, and the small, uh, which is uh, retrofitted from two rows of 13 cells. Right, there is a 13 cells. And the small pan has six cells, and re retrofitted from two rows of three cells. So the cross mark means a seed drop, the dark mark means a sinker. The large pen was divided into six small areas by those uh, partial uh, fans. We were hoping that those fans can help cells uh, fighting, provide some hiding spaces for those cells during fighting, and also protection during feeding. The four space allowance in both large and small pens were uh, 16. 5 square feet per cell. In the small pens, we store his cells by size, which means small cells were housed separated from a uh, big cell. But in the large pen, they didn't store cells, which means both small and large cells were uh, housed in the same pen. So we collected some performance data on about uh, 800 uh, cells, including about 300 in both small and the big pens, and 150 uh, in small pens. You can see uh, those cells were moved into the pen after pregnancy check, which means they were pregnant. You can see in cells, the uh, during, uh, about 98% cells feraled, in the large pen, 92% feraled, 92% feraled, and in the small pen, about 95% cells feraled. So in general, cells in pens performed worse than cells in cells. In the two uh, sizes pens, large pens performed worse than small pens. So this uh, study just demonstrated that it's difficult to manage cells use the trend of uh, competitive feeding. Both free access files and gated feeding files are non-competitive feeding systems. In both systems, each file has one ball and they are locked in the ball during feeding. So there's no competition for feed and gated feeding systems show very well in this system. But the downside of these systems is that they took too much space, which will use the uh, cell inventory in the barn compared to other group housing systems. So the electronic cell feeder system actually appears the most favorable system to produce. Compared to the other uh, non-competitive systems, electronic cell feeder can control feed intake and better because the computer controls the feeding station can uh, allocate different amount of feed to each individual cell if needed. And also, the, feed, the feeder can provide a different kind of feed, such as high protein feed or a high fiber feed, 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 feed
nutritional requirement. In addition, the, the feeder does not take much, the feeder station does not take much space and we can integrate new technologies in automation. In the ESF system, when they move the cells or gills into the system for, uh, for the first time, they need to train those cells or gills. So it usually takes about one week to train these animals. Uh, it's easier to train gills than cells. Once trained, those gills and cells can use these for the rest of their life. Another issue with uh, ESF system is it's, it's a sequential eating or sequential feeding system, which means only one cell can eat at a certain time. So remember, in this system, when it's sequential feeding, it's always the dominant, uh, the dominant cells eat first and the subordinate cells eat later. So if the feeder is overcrowded, the ordinance style may not be able to get their feet. We did a study um, to compare performance and animal welfare uh, get a cells in spouse versus in ESS 10. It was a very large scale study. We used about 1,600 cells in total with about 230,000 to uh, 450,000 in each treatment group. And in this uh, figure, you can see the uh, static means static pens, where our cells were moving into the pen at one time and moved out or bearing all together. The static pen, uh, the dynamic pen on the other side, uh, is when some cells in the pen uh, were due for bearing, moved out, we move a new group of cells to the pen to keep the pen full. So the dynamic pen is never empty. The pre in the figure means cells were moved into the pen, a pre-implantation. In this case, uh, they were moved into the pen one week after breeding. And the post-implant cells were moved into the pen five weeks after breeding. So from the chart, you can see for the post-implant South, they had similar feral rate to uh, as the south in falls. But the pre-implant south, they had about 4% lower feral rate compared to the south in falls. So this data tells us that south performance can be maintained or even improved in ESS pens. But the management options within the group housing system can make a difference. To assess animal welfare, we also uh, evaluated lameness uh, on those on our cells, actually on all 1,600 cells. So the data shows that uh, cells in the dynamic pen, regarding pre or post implantation, had higher incidence of lameness compared to cells in spouse or uh, just the uh, static test. So taking together, uh, this study suggests that keeping cells in static pens and mixing them up implantation is a better option for cells uh, in group housing system. So, in summary, each housing system has advantages and disadvantages in terms of controlling individual feed intake and aggression. Also, uh, in terms of efficient use of floor space, uh, compared to uh, competitive feeding systems, more competitive, competitive feeding systems are better of cell performance and welfare because more competitive feeding systems can control individual feeding and eliminate aggression during feed. Finally, I, I want to uh, emphasize that uh, group housing itself does not enhance animal welfare if it operates management protocols and worker skills 
do not inflate plate. So regardless of which housing system we choose, we need to understand the housing system, develop appropriate protocols, and train our employees. I think my presentation shows the management to make a difference. So to safeguard our animals in group housing systems, uh, management is also important.